Today, I'm going to present to you a new side channel attack methodology against commercially available DNA synthesizers. This work is a, re uh, is a result of a collaboration between multiple departments in UC Irvine and UC Riverside as a part of an effort to produce high throughput secured DNA synthesizers. I understand that the majority of the crowd here most probably don't remember much from their high school biology class. So let's start with some basics, DNA molecules. The biological information of all living organisms are stored and transformed in the form of DNA molecules. The DNA molecules are chains of four base types, A, G, C, and T, which are attached together to form the famous helix form that you can see here. The different combination of the bases in the DNA molecules create different types of protein, which each one of them will have certain functionality in the given organism. But the DNA molecules are not just produced in nature anymore. <clears throat> Over the last century, scientists were able to produce these molecules in the laboratory environment as well. Currently, the field of synthetic DNA security is primarily focused on one single aspect of synthetic DNA molecules, and that's bioterrorism. The fact is that some synthetic DNA molecules can be used to create uh, deadly diseases which can cause human extinction. For years, government agencies have tried to nullify this effect, but this threat with various uh, regulations, monitoring, and training systems. Besides bioterrorism, others have shown that synthetic DNA technologies are vulnerable to hacking as well. Specifically, Peter Nave from the uh, University of Washington two years ago in Usenix showed that some malicious DNA strands can cause an overflow problem in the DNA sequencer software. The fact is that synthetic DNA, uh, DNA uh, uh, technologies highly rely on cyber physical systems, systems that their vulnerabilities are often overlooked. So today, I'm going to challenge a different aspect of synthetic DNA technology which needs more attention from security experts. In recent years, many companies have vested interest in synthetic DNA molecules. Uh, scientists have started to use uh, synthetic DNA molecules to create new drugs, to uh, come up with better treatment procedures, and they even have engineered disease resistance crops to fit the growing uh, population of the Earth. In any of these applications, huge financial investments are needed to make sure that the uh, particular DNA, engineered DNA sequence is going to carry out the uh, interesting function that uh, the scientists are looking for. In other terms, the sequence of bases in the DNA molecules are intellectual properties, and they need to be protected against possible adversary, especially when they are in the research phase and the sequence is not patented yet. With this motivation, I'm going to introduce you a new way of stealing the order of the bases in the DNA molecules through acoustic side channels. Along the way, I'm going to talk about a new interesting algorithm and show that how freely available tools can help the attacker with his mission. And at the end, I will shortly talk about possible countermeasures. In our work, in order to attack a target DNA synthesizer, we propose that an attacker can simply place a microphone, which can be a cell phone, in close proximity to the DNA synthesizer and collect the noise that it creates. In this scenario, the attacker can be a disgruntled employee, a visitor, or even a compromised electronic device which exists in the same laboratory that the DNA synthesizer works. Once the attacker collects the acoustic noise, he will use his estimation functions to predict the sequence and sell, that his, uh, sell his prediction to a competing company for a profit. Before starting to talk about estimation function, let's see how the DNA synthesizers work. Co commonly used DNA synthesizers carry out four repetitive steps sequentially to produce final output DNA molecules. At every cycle, a new base is delivered to the output DNA molecule in the second step, which from rest of the talk, I'm going to refer to that uh, segment as a base delivery. 
While the machine is working, it creates a continuous noise with a click-like noise uh, sounds once in a while. Which is going to sound like this. Clicking sound, uh, by studying the structure of the DNA synthesizer, we found out that the click-like sounds are coming from solenoid valves controlling the fluids in the machine, and the continuous noise is from the fluids running in the pipes of the machine. With further investigation, we also found out that with the use of the user manual of the machine, it is easy to map the uh, steps, the, the cyclic steps in chemical synthesis to the actual recorded uh, signal. And from there, we can extract the delivery segments. Once the delivery segments are pinpointed, the next big task is identifying the type of the delivered waste, which we use uh, state-of-the-art feature engineering uh, and classifiers uh, to classify them. To train the classifiers, we synthesize a training DNA sequence with a profiling DNA synthesizer. We record the acoustic signal generated by the machine and we use the uh, user manual of the machine to segment the signal and extract the delivery stage. Next, we extract, next we extract uh, features from time domain and frequency domain and along with the labels that we know from the training sequence to uh, train a classifier. Once the uh, classifier converges and reaches good accuracy, uh, the the estimation function is virtually ready for the attacker. The attacker can use that to make predictions for the synthesized DNA molecule, and after that, if possible, he can use even some post-processing tools to uh, validate his predictions. And at the end, he will end up with the stolen DNA sequence. The classifiers that we trained predict the type of each base independent from the other deliveries. Uh, but what if we figure out, like the post-processing tool figures out that the, uh, the whole sequence as a whole is faulty. What's the next best prediction in this scenario? Consider the example here. In this example, for each delivery, the, cla the classifier estimates probability of that base to be one of the AGCT types. Ideally, if we always choose the uh, the base type with the highest probability, we will have the highest confidence in final, uh, in final uh, sequence. So here, as you can see, the first prediction will be AGG. And the second best prediction here, based on this probabilities, should be AGC. Why? Because in the last delivery, if you notice, uh, the classifier estimates similar probabilities for both G and C base types. So what's the ne uh, next best prediction, the third one, and so on? To answer this question, if we choose a naive approach, the, uh, the solution will be considering brute forcing all the combination of base types, which obviously be, will be very time consuming and in order of four to the power of length of DNA sequence. So to solve this problem, we came up with an algorithm. Uh, which involves creating a directed acyclic graph. To create this graph, we add a start and end node first. Then for each space delivery, we add four nodes to our graph as a layer. Then we connect the consecutive two layers with weighted edges. And weight of each edge will correspond to the log of probability of, uh, log of the probability that has been estimated by the classifier. In this graph, a pass from the start node to the end node will represent one prediction. And from the graph theory, we know that it's possible to find the k-longest passes in this graph with asymptotic time complexity of n log n plus k, which uh, obviously is much better, much faster than what we had it with the Bruce Force algorithm. So uh, to evaluate our attack methodology, we choose one of the widely used uh, DNA synthesizers in the industry, which is called AB3400. We use off the one of the shelf uh, microphone and place it in 10 centimeter proximity to the DNA synthesizer. The uh, microphone could have also been a cell phone as well. Then we, we evaluated the attack methodology 
against three factors. Possibility of the training classifiers, as well as the effect of the environmental noise and the distance of the microphone from the DNA synthesizer. First, we show that it's possible to train the classifiers with limited number of training samples. We use various types of classification methods available in the literature, and the best performing classifiers converge to about 88% accuracy with only 180 sa training samples as a delivery base. Next, to determine the effect of noise on the classifiers, we added various types of synthetic noises to the collected signal. Our results show that typical environmental noise that we can find in a laboratory, such as air conditioning noise and people talking to each other, won't actually have a, a, a significant attack on, a effect on the attack methodology. To give you a tangible reference, uh, the conversation happening between two persons is usually below 65 decibels, and you see that uh, the uh, conversation and the pink noise they don't affect until 69 decibels. However, we also noticed that some high-pitched uh, uh, noises can actually degrade the accuracy of the classifiers. But those noises, usually, they don't exist in the laboratory environment. Finally, we emulate the effect of the distance of the microphone from the DNA synthesizer. Basically, we kept the room noise level the same while reducing the sound pressure level uh, that we uh, sound pressure level of the sound that we are receiving from the DNA synthesizer. Our experiments show that, the, uh, that our attack methodology is going to uh, be effective as long as the distance is below 0 0.7 meters. Okay, so uh, our attack methodology was working for random sequences, but in order to make sure that the attack methodology is going to work in a real world scenario, we crafted a new experiment. We asked one of our collaborators to synthesize a meaningful DNA sequence without giving me any, uh, any information about it. So I went to the lab and I collected the acoustic noise then, and used my estimation functions to make prediction. I sent my estimation to that collaborator and here is his response email to me. As you can see here, I only had six mispredictions out of 45 predictions that I had which matches the accuracy that I was expected from my attack. We carried out the same, uh, the same experiments three more times, and every time we achieved the same accuracy. So on average, we, uh, we achieved 88% accuracy. But uh, is 88% uh, accuracy good enough? The answer is actually yes. We, as, uh, as I mentioned, the last step of an attack will be po uh, application-specific post-processing. For example, here we know that the DNA sequence which has been synthesized is going to have some biological use. So we use a publicly available tool from NIH to, uh, may, uh, to give us some suggestion for the predicted result. Here I'm showing you how this BLAST tool works. Uh, the name of that tool was BLAST. Um, basically, the BLAST tool is like an autocorrect algorithm for DNA sequences, and uh, for a given sequence, it returns you the suggestion. As you see here, it was giving uh, this, uh, this tool gave us same results for both, uh, same results which included insulin as a suggestion for both original sequence and the predicted sequence. Okay, so now that we have introduced the attack methodology, we also suggest a couple of countermeasures as well. We suggest that the DNA synthesizer designers should consider using vibration absorbent material and add artificial noise to their system. We also suggest that delivery segment obfuscation is a choice and a secure laboratory environment is a must. So, these were some suggestions, and we welcome the research community to come up with even better strategies to mitigate uh, these uh, type of attack methodologies. To summarize my work today, I introduced you a new attack methodology to steal the order of bases in a valuable synthetic DNA sequence. I propose an efficient approach to extend the predictions from only one possible DNA sequence to K-based DNA sequences. And at the end, I tested the attack methodology in the real-world scenario and proved that it's going to work. 
Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you enjoyed this talk. I'm, uh, I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Hello, Burak from Santa Barbara. Um, I have a question. Have you evaluated the proposed countermeasures? Like, I don't know, they, did you add some Gaussian noise and So, if you remember, one of our results was based on adding some noises to the system, right? Okay. We showed that not all the noises will be effective, but if the noise is high pitched, meaning that it has higher energy and higher frequency, okay. then it will be effective and reduce the uh, the attack's accuracy. Okay, uh, another question. For K-best um, K -best sequence algorithm, have you checked hidden Markov models? So actually- They are, they are pretty close to like sequence prediction and- uh, Yes, actually we came up with this algorithm based on uh, knowing that how uh, uh, Markov models are working. But the innovation here was the fact that how we are creating that graph, how we are mapping the probabilities that the classifiers have estimated to that graph. If you uh, consider the general Markov model, you will have a big matrix. All the nodes are connected to each other. You have to make sure that you have probabilities for every one of them. But here, we design our own graph. OK, thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, Eric Pauly, Penn State. Um, yeah. Whenever you trained and tested your classifier, did you do those two steps on the same physical machine or on different machines? And did you classify so, the transferability of your, of your classifier across machines? So in our experiments, the, both of them happened with the same machine. But uh, we believe that it is going to work uh, I even if we have different machines, because all of them, first of all, have same structures. And also, the, uh, we can use methods uh, to even, uh, you, you can assume that uh, if we are able to go to that room, we might be able to actually record the noise for days and then use um, clustering algorithms to cluster them, especially because before we have done the feature engineering and we know what types of features we are going to see in the signal. We, we use those uh, engineered features along with uh, clustering and uh, to uh, specialize it for uh, a new machine. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hi, Louis from Universal Florida. Um, quick question, do you know how long it usually takes to synthesize the sequence? Yes, and it is very time consuming. For a sequence with lengths of like 60, 70, it will take around like six hours. Okay, and a side question, I know you, you compared this against a BLAST database. Was it just one sequence that you used or multiple sequence to check if they actually did? Uh, so we did match. that for all the test cases, okay. and in our results, we saw the same result for every single one of them. We had at least one suggestion that were uh, the original sequence and the uh, reconstructed sequence. Awesome, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much.